Matt with Howie Equipment here, located in Jackson, Michigan, and we are doing a comparison video between Toro and Gravely, specifically the commercial mowers. Disclaimer, we're a Toro dealer. There's gonna be some bias here. I try to pride myself on not being biased as we're talking about different things, so I'm gonna to try to do that in this case. We're comparing, I wouldn't say perfect apples to apples in this scenario, and I'm gonna talk about if we were, kind of what are those differences and prices and all those sorts of things. So what we're comparing right now is a 2020, this is used because it's a, uh, actually one that we're selling, so we had it in here, wanted to talk about it, but this is a 2020 model, it's a Pro 260, so I think between the 2020s and the 2022s, I can't imagine there's much of a difference. And then we're looking at a brand new 2020 uh, Toro Z Master 6000 series. So the 6000 series mowers have bigger transmissions and typically they're actually selling for promotional pricing and that's really gonna change if you get fleet pricing as well, but they're, it can be $16,000 and up. The particular one I'm looking at, is, I, I believe right around a $17,000 machine. So we're comparing a $17,000 machine to a $13,000 machine. And I wish I had a Toro 4000 series with the same transmissions because that would be a perfect apples to apples scenario. Uh, Toro is selling the Toro 4000 Z Master, um, which is most comparable to the model I've got right now. And I believe the price difference might be around $1,000 or more for a Toro. So uh, let's go ahead and just compare some things that I know are the same from one model to another. But first of all, uh, let, let's talk about the Gravely. So just from looking one to the other, the Gravely is definitely a bigger machine. There's no doubt about it. This is a uh, the, the framing, uh, Toro used to make a 3000 series mower, which would probably be most comparable to this Pro Turn 260. They eliminated the 3000 and now they have the 4000 and it's really got a totally different framing um, on it. So the, the framing is not necessarily any bigger just because it's a higher grade mower, but you can see the tires are a little bigger, probably the fronts and the rears, but especially the fronts. Uh, uh, you, you can see it, obviously it's going to have a bigger bearing there on the front uh, uh, caster wheel. And then just kind of looking around, I'd probably say that if we're just looking at the forks and some of these other things, the rest of it looks similar to me. This uh, square tubing is about the same size. Both machines are getting a 7 gauge steel deck. If you look at the deck side by side, obviously they're both 7 gauge. As I look at it, uh, here's some bias coming into the picture, but this just looks a little bit thicker. I mean, they're both called 7 gauge decks, but it looks thicker. Toro puts a bull nose edge on it, uh, which I think adds a little bit of extra reinforcement. But you got a really thick piece of steel on the front edge there for the Gravely as well. I mean, really, you talk about these decks one to another. Um, pr pretty similar as far as how beefy they are. Toro does have the ability to change the baffling there on the deck, and it's, it's their turbo force deck that they're putting on all their stuff. So besides that fact, as we're just focused on the decks here as well, um, just to look at the, from one pulley to another, if I flip up here, I do like this little feature. This stays up for Gravely, won't tip over. Kind of like that, so you can access in there and not have to worry about holding that up. When I compare these from one to the other, Toro definitely has a bigger spindle. So like some of their other components, maybe not quite as big. Now this doesn't have that. You see Toro, that can flip over. It's not really a big deal because that does stay up, but I do like how Gravely locks theirs out right there. Um, that's a bigger spindle. That's a bigger pulley. The, th this deck is on their 4000 series mower as well. So all that's gonna be similar. They both have that same kind of accessibility. I know a lot of guys that take these covers right off uh, for commercial use because it's easier to clean them out. Now they've actually left the end of this open. Whether that's better or worse, I'm not sure. It's made for a protection point. Kind of nice. It probably makes it a little bit easier to clean out. Toro has a plastic piece, but honestly, it's super easy to take on and off on this as well. All you gotta do is pull on that piece of plastic. So it's really easy to take that piece on and off for Toro. Uh, but, but the way Gravely makes it without even having to take it off, it looks like you could clean that pretty darn easily. Per that theme I was kind of pointing out, I'd say a lot of those pieces, like if you look in here, this is all pretty thick and robust. If you look at what the, the deck hangers are hanging on, it's a little bit thinner from Toro. It's a little bit smaller. I don't know, I'd, I'd have to look, you know, I'm, I'm not making this video off of complete and total specs because I don't know the grade steel behind those, but if you're getting a Gravely, it looks like you're getting a little bit, it's just the, the components are a little bit beefier. 
Toro prides itself on the engineering side of things, not making anything bigger than what has to be, but who doesn't like something that's bigger? I, I get that. They're both obviously gonna have a rubber uh, chute. You've obviously got a big difference in just uh, the, the handles. Gravely's known for having these handles that flip in. I don't know, that's just really a preference thing to me as far as which one I would prefer to have. I'm gonna argue biasly, obviously, as we know with me being the Toro dealer, that I just, I do believe some of these details as we start to go through this machine are just a little bit better thought out or maybe a little bit better engineered by Toro. But I know that if you talk to a Toro uh, rep and then you talk to a Gravely rep right after that, he'd tell you all the detail components that Gravely is better. So I'm telling you what I know uh, going through this thing as well. but. Um, just for one, as we start to go back through the machine after the deck, uh, just, just looking at some of the, the smaller things here, but just this, this to me being open, I don't quite understand that. Some things could fall out there versus the Toro just has a little bit nicer interface there that you can store some things and it's got a little bit more storage on the other side. If you look at the two decks, uh, this just has a little bit of, uh, it, that's nice that you're not going to slip and fall on that, but if you compare it to what Toro has, it's just a nicer product. It just, it feels a little bit more premium to me. Some of this area is open from Gravely versus if you look around the Toro, it just, it feels a little bit more finished um, as you go around the machine. So again, I know I'm, I know I'm talking biasly as I, as I talk about some of these things, um, but that's just what I'm seeing as I look at these side by side. But as I said, I, I uh, definitely can see that Gravely looks beefier, you know, as you go around the machine. So we've talked about how we're not comparing the exact identical type machines, right? Because you've got a Pro 260 versus a 6000 series Toro Z Master. A 4000 series Toro Z Master would be, to me, the equivalent. It would still cost you a little bit more money than the Gravely, uh, but, but what are some of those big components that you look from one to the other? Uh, if the Toro had 5,400 cc pumps, I would wanna see a Gravely with 5,400 cc pumps. So we're comparing a Gravely that has Hydro Gear ZT 5,400 cc pumps. The Toro 4000, they have an option uh, to have a ZT 5,400 cc pump. And that's kind of the things you look at mowers they're buying a lot of these big components from the same company. Different companies can get the exact same components. So the transmissions and the engines, those can be the exact same thing. It's the engineering around that that you really wanna be looking at. So I'm comparing uh, a Toro over here that has Parker transmissions. Parker transmissions, uh, at least on the Toro side, I don't know exactly what Gravely has to offer. Uh, they've got a 12cc pump and that's what you'll see in the 5000 series. When you go up to the 6000 series, you get a 16cc Parker transmission. So it's, it's a better transmission. Gravely has a Pro Turn uh, 660 and I looked it up and they've got Parker transmissions in those. So those are some of the things as you go up in the Gravely line you're gonna get as well. If I went lower in the Toro line, then go as low you know, on a commercial side into the 3000s. Uh, like a 3100 cc pump. So you wanna try to compare uh, those things. I do think Toro's gonna cost you a little bit more money as you, if you spec them out equivalent. And I think the difference in what you're getting is just a few of those fine details. But there's, there's no doubt that holistically we come back, keep coming back. I can look at these tires side by side. This one's a little bit bigger kind of looking from one to the other. Again, I give the nod to Gravely. I'm a taller person. My knees get closer. I can adjust this to go forward or backwards so it doesn't hit my knee, this kind of angle here. But there's only two different height adjustments I can put on that. For Gravely, there's a lot of different height adjustments I can put in here. Coming back, we are looking uh, Obviously, I said as you go up in series, some of the biggest things, honestly, you go up in series is what I already talked about, those transmissions, but the engines within the series, you can get different size engines. This happens to be a 26 and a half horsepower fuel injected option, and we're looking at a carbureted Yamaha option. This was two years ago, and so I don't know if they're still offering that Yamaha option. I'm sure you guys can tell me in the comments if they are. Um, I know that, generally speaking, Toro puts 
it, it, if I, it, and I think they've really changed this in the last few years of just starting to put these bigger, beefier type things on it because a lot of uh, the other brands out there you can get some really big, some really beefy options. You can get a 37 horsepower Vanguard option in this 6000 series. So Toro is starting to offer some of those really big components, but uh, they're, they're trying to pride themselves off the engineering side. Uh, do If you don't need the 37 horse, why necessarily throw it in there um, per se? But I will say for some of these guys that, are, that need the really big leaf collection systems, it really helps having that extra horsepower. It really helps so you don't have to be double cutting your grass. So I totally understand that aspect as well. If I flip up the seats, you can just see a difference wise. This is a common setup uh, to have the battery right under the seat like that. Toro puts the battery out beside the engine out in the open. Uh, you know, where do you want it? It's kind of the preference thing to me. Maybe there's some pros and cons with both. Um, as far as the transmissions go, again, we're looking at one that has the Parker transmissions and you've got the serviceability right there. Your reservoirs are actually right there as a part of the transmission and they are outside the machine here. Obviously, as you get to this type of level, you're getting serviceable transmissions from one to the other. Gravely has a different parking brake style than most other mowers. I see a lot of mowers with this kind of setup here and you got the parking brake that comes up and locks your wheel motors. This one actually has a bar that will lock uh, and, and all those gravely seem to do it the same way um, as far as just, just the way that linkage works is a little bit different from gravely. Uh, you've got two gas tanks that sit on the side. This is another point that Toro purposely puts their gas tank in the center. Part of that is lowering the center of gravity. That's a little bit better for the hills as far as keeping your center of gravity lower. This has the gas tanks that can, can bring that center of mass up a little bit higher. Another nod to the Gravely is that the Gravely's got a little bit bigger gas tank capacity. I think that I'd have to double check the specs. I think I've looked them up on Gravely and I think it's a 13 gallon capacity. And the Toro over here has got a 12 gallon capacity. If you went down to the 4000 series, which is most comparable to the model right here, you got a 10 gallon capacity. So the theme continues that Gravely's got a little bit bigger. I think holistically, that's what you're getting from Gravely. And uh, I've pointed out that the spindles seem to be a little bit bigger uh, on the Toro side. I would have to look at what does the Pro 460 or 660 have to offer. I'm looking at the one I've got right in front of me, but this interface is a little bit nicer. You've got a nicer digital display here for Toro. Uh, this just gives you the hour meter. I got to imagine if you go up uh, in grade, you're going to get a little bit nicer interface as you go up. This right here is not quite as nice to tell you uh, your gas levels. This has an electronic piece in here that will tell you uh, w what your fuel capacity is at. If you go lower line in Toro, they have some gauges that are similar to this and they have some that are sight line. So I think that difference is probably a little bit more of which model you're looking at from one to the other. I do like, uh, and I, don't know that I pointed this out with the difference in seats. This has an isolation mount that gives you one extra level of comfort. Uh, this just moving back and forth, you can see that would really take a lot of strain off of the driver. And even though, yes, they both have the suspension seat, this doesn't have any isolation mount under it. So probably absolutely most important, it is important that you have a dealer located by you that is a phenomenal dealer and we're trying to be that in jackson michigan for toro so we tell you if you live in jackson michigan get yourself a toro if you've got a phenomenal gravely dealer that's in your neck of the woods then gravely could be the correct choice for you but i've had uh you know i've talked to my rep about the gravely mowers versus toro mowers and my rep says all day long, the quality of cut. I've seen people leave fleets of Gravelys to come over to the Toro site for the quality of cut. And I can imagine that there would be a Gravely rep on the other side of things talking about how people have left Toro to come to him for some certain reason as well. But, you know, I will say as a Toro dealer, with the bias involved in all, the quality cut of a Toro, I do not think that you can beat it. And that's part of what separates Toro from the rest. And part of that, is the engineering that I've been talking about throughout this process. But a big, beefy, 
heavy duty mower. Gravely is definitely that. And Gravely, they make some really fast machines. If you put this down on the ground, this thing moves incredibly fast. And that can be a huge advantage for you as well. But you gotta be able to withstand it with the comfort as well. As far as warranties on the machine, Toro has a five year warranty on this. I believe there's an hour limit. I think it's 1500 hours for Toro. I think from what I saw, Gravely has a five year warranty. Um, I don't know if there's an hour limit on that. And when you compare the two together, you're getting really high quality machines, a uh, little bit bigger overall for the Gravely. Certain components I've tried to point out by Toro, I think are a little bit better made or a little bit better thought out. Um, but again, I know if I was a, a Gravely deal dealer, I was talking uh, to a Gravely rep, they could point out some, some details that they're thinking about as well. So either way, you're getting a phenomenal product from one to the other. Please tell me in the comments some of the stuff I missed or one versus the other, but, but I really stand behind the fact of who is the dealer that you're gonna work with because uh, that is probably of number one importance to you guys as you're coming in. If, if I'm just gonna try to blanket statement and say Toro is better than Gravely, or, or if someone would say Gravely is better than Toro, I don't think it's a fair statement because I think there's some Toro products that maybe they could have maybe engineered a little bit better. They missed a mark on something specific. And I think the same thing is probably true of Gravely. Holistically, you're getting two very good products and who's the dealer that you're gonna work with throughout this process and that's where we try to separate ourselves the most, obviously being a Toro dealer, the service after the sale. I can tell you that Toro does a great job staying behind their stuff with warranty work. And I can't speak to, to Gravely and they very well may do that as well. So getting two good products. I hope this helped you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I don't think you're gonna go wayward if you choose Gravely or if you choose Toro, you're gonna get a really solid product and they both make a really great commercial line. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, Tool or Toy, we have it.